in the ongoing conflict between Hamas and Israel, which has been raging since October 2023, the situation continues to intensify, drawing in not only Hamas, but also a multitude of other organizations striving for Palestinian independence. One such formidable force is the Palestine Islamic Jihad, or PIJ, whose involvement in the conflict cannot be understated. Their attacks aimed at pressuring Israel have been nothing short of significant, employing heavy-handed tactics such as rocket launches. Now let's delve into the intriguing world of the Palestine Islamic Jihad. Who stands at the helm of PIG? What nefarious deeds have they carried out and what other inquiries arise from their actions? PIJ, born in the crucible of turmoil in 1981, traces its origins back to the vision of a Palestinian luminary, Fathi Abd al-Aziz al-Shakaki. With a fervent ideology that spurns all political overtures for peace, PIJ adamantly holds that Palestinian triumph can only be secured through military onslaughts against the Israeli regime. Their manifesto, etched in stone through a litany of proof, dates back to their inaugural strike against Israel in 1983. Their steadfast refusal to endorse the Oslo Peace Accords of 1993. Once hailed as the harbinger of Palestinian liberation through diplomatic maneuvering, further underscores their unwavering commitment to armed struggle. During the tumultuous Second Intifada, PIJ unleashed a barrage of assaults targeting Israel's military installations and civilian bastions alike, from fortified bases to bustling thoroughfares adorned with eateries and transit stops. It is this turbulent saga of the Second Intifada that ultimately earned PIJ the ignominious designation of a terrorist organization by a consortium of Western powers, including the United States, Australia, Canada, the European Union, New Zealand, and the United Kingdom, not to mention the State of Israel itself. And yet, despite their avowed fidelity to their founding principles, the current steward of PIJ is not a seasoned warrior, but a Palestinian statesman named Ziad al-Nakala. In terms of operational resilience, the United States often links PIJ as a group affiliated with Iran. In 2014, the United States even issued a statement asserting that PIJ attacks were funded by Iran and Syria. This assertion from the United States is well-founded due to PIJ's operational presence not only in Gaza and the West Bank, but also in southern Lebanon, where the Hezbollah group supported by Iran holds sway. Moreover, the majority of PIJ militants are based in Hezbollah-controlled areas in southern Lebanon. PIJ militants are quite recognizable as they often sport distinctive black bandanas with yellow writing and their logo. Now, turning to the assaults on Israel, amidst the ongoing conflict in 2023, PIJ actively joins in assaulting Israel through its military wing, the Al-Quds Brigade. In early January 2024, the Al-Quds faction released a video showcasing their attack on an IDF command post in southern Gaza. The video portrays Al-Quds militants firing 107 mm rockets from within an abandoned building in the Al-Zaytun area of Gaza. Following the rocket barrages, the assault persisted with the launch of numerous mortars toward the command post. The intent behind employing mortars was to expand the scope of the attack and the affected area to thwart IDF troops from escaping. Subsequently, it came to light that Al-Quds successfully neutralized the command post despite most IDF soldiers fleeing in jeeps. Before this, in December 2023, the Al-Quds Brigade claimed responsibility for a series of attacks in the West Bank. These assaults targeted IDF military convoys, destroying armored vehicles and tanks belonging to the IDF, and inflicting injuries upon scores of IDF soldiers. Well, there's this video put out by Al-Quds showing their militia launching an attack using mortars. Unfortunately, in the video, they've captioned it as targeting an Israeli civilian settlement in the Netzerim area. 
Now, we know Israel's in the wrong for hitting civilian targets in Gaza, but hitting back and hurting more civilians ain't the right way to go either. Al-Quds ought to be focusing on taking out military assets and Israeli command posts like we talked about in the two previous attacks. This attack on the civilian settlement is just giving Israel more ammunition to discredit Al-Quds. Especially back in October 2023, Israel went ahead and accused Al-Quds of being behind rocket attacks that wrecked the Saudi-owned Al-Ahli hospital in the Gaza Strip. Ya Allah! Ya Allah! Ya Allah! That hospital strike stands as one of the worst in Gaza, leaving up to 500 folks dead. And speaking of attacks aimed at the Israeli military, the Al-Quds Brigade has quite the feat under their belt. In one of their organized assaults, this militia group managed to knock out Israel's advanced Skylark drone, which was on duty keeping tabs on conditions in central Gaza. Taking down that drone sure dealt a heavy blow, weakening the IDF's lines of communication and intel about what was happening in Gaza. Come 2024, the PIJ's attacks on Israel ain't letting up. Just last January, Al-Quds forces succeeded in pushing Israeli troops back from their defensive base in the Tulkarem and Nur Shams areas. Those Israeli troops beat a retreat after a slew of airstrikes leveled the base and took out the bulldozers they were using. And it ain't just Tulkarem and Nur Shams feeling the heat. There have been other attacks over in the eastern part of Jabalia city too, where Israeli tanks and other military vehicles got caught in the crossfire thanks to bomb attacks carried out by Al-Quds, targeting Israel's main routes. In addition to the years 2023 and 2024, PIJ is also often reported to have carried out a series of attacks in previous years. Based on the content of news reports discussing PIJ's terrorist activities, this organization actively attacks Israel every year. Starting from 2018 to 2022 with escalation in 2023, after discussing the series of attacks carried out by PIJ in Israeli territory, we must also not forget to discuss Israel's attacks on the Gaza Strip, which are the basis of the current conflict. These Israeli attacks have already claimed so many victims, reaching 23,700 lives lost, and there are already 60,000 injured victims dominated by women and children. Not to mention the issues of hunger and how Israel cuts off waiter, electricity, and internet there. The attacks in 2023 were even claimed by experts as the most destructive attacks in history. So indeed, this war must be stopped immediately. Efforts to end this war have certainly been attempted frequently. In the International Court of Justice vote at the UN General Assembly on December 13, 2023, a ceasefire resolution in Gaza was even decided. However, as usual, resolutions remain resolutions because until now, the UN has not taken any concrete steps to stop Israel. In the decision of the International Court of Justice on January 27, 2024, yesterday, where Israel was sued by South Africa with the support of many countries. No significant decision was made by the International Court because from the results, Israel was only ordered to stop its army from committing genocide, including acts of incitement, and Israel must also participate in improving the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip. So there hasn't been any concrete action taken by the International Court of Justice, such as deploying UN emergency forces in Gaza or other measures to ensure security in Gaza. From the perspective of Mohammed Shteya, the Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority, this decision by the International Court of Justice is still pending. On one hand, Shtayi says that Israel has lost its impunity, but on the other hand, the decision of the International Court of Justice does not mention an immediate ceasefire. Even though a ceasefire is the most important thing to end the suffering of Gaza residents. 
In addition to the uncertain steps of the UN, there are also steps taken by the United States that have been criticized. Labeling itself as a guardian of world peace, the United States seems to turn a blind eye and instead support all actions taken by Israel. In fact, the United States has formed a defense coalition in the Red Sea to secure against Houthi militia actions targeting Israeli merchant ships. The behavior of the United States in forming this coalition clearly does not alleviate the conflict, but rather escalates the conflict that is currently ongoing. So with all the criticisms and demands falling on Israel, the UN should be proactive in resolving issues in Palestine, not just issuing resolutions and then disappearing like it is now.